Hey, deserving listeners, Netflix, Love is Blind, season three. Let's watch and see what comes out of my face as I react. We have four weeks to get married. And for you to tell people that they're attractive people as an engaged woman, he's a cute guy and, and you, in the no. real world, whatever happens, happens, right? No. So f me, right? No. Yeah, so he's still in that mode. I think he's dialed it back a little bit, but it's still ramped up. And again, it's the anger, it's the hostility, it's not the pain. He's in pain. And if he just exhibited that, she wouldn't feel attacked and on her heels, and she would actually be able to lean in. <laughs> You're gonna tell me you love me and shit like that, but f me, right? I'm fighting for you. What are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know if it's the ominous music that's affecting me, but it, the longer this goes on, you know, earlier I was saying, you know, we're getting into abusive, v verbal abusive territory, emotional abusive territory. And from the beginning, I was saying that he's doing this to punish her. That's what people do. It's not great. But now we're getting into the zone of like, um, hey, pal, <laughs> like, back off. He's having tone with her and this unrelenting, she's crying. Why would, you, if she were just standing there with her arms crossed, you know, not great, but she's clearly suffering. So why would you not at least pause it for a bit? At the very least, give her the, some benefit of the doubt or something. But I will say that she's not really being very reassuring to him. She's, she's not really denying what's happening because she might not be able to honestly really deny what's happening. Now, if all that's true, which is fine for her to still have feelings for Cole, you know, who knows what's happening, but Matt could see that and be like, well, yeah, I mean, I guess she still has feelings. That'd be rough, right? But it might be the reality. It's hard to cope with. And I wonder if they're breaking their relationship right now. I'm always wondering because, you know, in the first season, only two of the, of the six couples that lasted to the honeymoon managed to stay, get married and stay married, right? And then season two, none of them did. And so I, I'm in a mode right now where I'm just like, well, let's just assume they all break up. <laughs> and when is the moment that that happens? Are, are we witnessing that right now? For you, Matt. Bro, what? You got your eyes on one person. You I should do. at least. I only you should have. It's not like that. Stop. This is ridiculous. Bro, I'm not going to get f***ing played, Colleen. Again, he could totally say, hey, it, it would have been nice if if you would have said this, and, and it would have been nice if you didn't say that, because it hurts me. It hurts me just by default, but also my history. And so, uh, I don't know. The next time it happens, could you please not do that again? Is that okay? There's nothing wrong with the request. There's nothing wrong with, I think a lot of people would prefer that their partner not openly flirt with someone else or seemingly openly flirt and proclaim how attractive someone else is. I think most partners in monogamous relationships would prefer that. It's okay. So the request is okay, but the delivery is aggressive, hostile, hurtful, and she's, you know, and her demeanor is kind of interesting too because she's, she's just sort of like crumbling and crying. I wonder what's going on for her. Is she shutting down? It kind of looks that way, right? which makes me wonder about her history. Because, you know, she has talked about how she doesn't like vulnerability. She just likes everything to be light. And I, I wonder, wow, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't have a lot of chaos in her family growing up, a lot of hostility and anger and rage, and she just learned to shut down and also to avoid vulnerability, to avoid emotions, and to want everyone, let's everyone just be happy. And this is this moment with Matt is emulative of that chaos of being berated. I don't know, it just kind of has that look, right? Which makes me feel bad for Colleen. Done? I might be. No, come on. I'm gonna get straight up. I didn't know how to react to that kind of situation. Hold on, do you hear yourself? You were engaged to me, and you did not know how to respond to... Uh, okay, so, I, again, she could have 
been a little bit more specific, but I was like, oh, okay, that, that's that's good. That's addressing it. And she's seemingly able to say that. She's like, look, I'm going to be straight up. I, I, did, I, just, I just didn't know how to deal with the situation. I've never been in a situation like that. It was weird. Now, if you're Matt, that's not super reassuring because it's like, well, what do you mean? If you run into a new situation, you're just going to go along with what someone else wants you to do instead of like thinking of about the big picture, considering my feelings or something. You know, I, you could see how that line of or that defense doesn't really help right um but then his demeanor of like putting her down and saying can you hear yourself you're you're stupid that's that verbal emotional abuse when you feel belittled when you feel stupid when you feel ashamed of yourself and someone is complaining to you that's a sign that you are being emotionally abused you're being berated you're being belittled you're being made to feel like you're a horrible human being. It's one thing if you were to like, I like you, I love you, you're a good person, I didn't like that behavior. It's a very different message than, Do you, can you listen to yourself right now? What's wrong with you? That, that kind of language. I'm gonna get straight up. I didn't know how to react to that kind of situation. Hold on, do you hear yourself? You were engaged to me and you did not know how to respond to somebody telling you that they are attracted to you. That's all I need to hear. I'm gonna tell how I feel, and this is, we're on two different pages. No, 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 please tell me. No, 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 I'm out. There's some rationality here for Matt that if we separate from the tone, and I think I was exaggerating his tone a little bit, as, you know, like, what's wrong? Because he didn't really say that, but he has that tone. But anyway, but if we separate from that tone that I've been talking about, and we just look at what happened and her reaction in this fight it's not super reassuring like if i were matt's friend and i'd be like matt dude like calm the f down one but two yeah i mean there are some signs here that this is not going to work colleen is not really saying the kinds of things that one would say if they loved you and didn't really want to lose you right and that might be within colleen but Maybe because of her aversion to being vulnerable and deep, it's you know, it's hard for her to access that, or she's having a traumatic reaction and she can't access any of those feelings. I don't know. Or she's just not really into Matt. I could imagine that being true, right? That she's really trying to force the situation. She fell in love-ish, I guess, or whatever you want to call pod love. She fell in pod love with Cole. It, she was really busted up when Cole said, I don't want to be with you because you don't want to have deep conversations. It was really hard for her. She was crying, crying, crying. Then she chooses, you know, meanwhile, Matt's around, right? She's communicating with Matt and she's evaluating all of her options. And she's like, okay, well, Brennan. And she goes after him. And then he breaks up with her. And Colleen is, again, devastated, naturally, crying, 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 crying. And you got to figure, and she's like, well, there is Matt. So, there's a lot of barriers for Matt to overcome just to ex just to really feel like this is real. Because for him, he chose Colleen from the beginning, it sounds like. Who knows if that's true. But So for him, there would be a lot of questions, right? Even if she were to say, no, you're the one, you're the one. You just have to wonder, right? Now, you don't want to punish someone or assume anything about it. Time will tell kind of a thing, right? But if you're really sensitive to being humiliated and harmed and cheated on or unloved or rejected because of his trauma, traumatic history, you'd kind of want to speed that evaluation process up, which can sometimes really create a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you know what I mean. But anyway, she's not really saying anything. So again, if I'm his friend, I'd be like, uh, Matt, will you calm the F down? You need a little bit of therapy to work on this. Like your communication skills are really aggressive, not okay. It, you know, you can express your feelings, da, da, da. Having said that, yeah, I think there are some signs that Colleen might not really love you. It might, it might not have anything thing to do with Cole, but you would just think you would hear other kinds of things. Like if Colleen said something like, you're totally right. I shouldn't have done what I did. And I, you know, like when she said, I'm going to be straight up with you. That was a situation I've never been in before. And thus I was just trying to go along with what the show wanted me to do or I felt like I was being impolite to Cole if I didn't say that he was cute too or something. I don't know. 
I, believe me, the whole time I just wanted to get out of the, that conversation. I felt like I was on the spot. And you're right. I, I didn't consider your feelings in the moment. You know, just something a little bit more. But she keeps, she's on her heels the whole time. Like, I didn't do anything wrong. This is a new situation. For, you know, not now we understand why she might be that way because he's berating her and, and belittling her. I'm out. Oh, it's please, very simple. Please. It's very simple. I imagine that he's doing the Megan thing, which is that he is saying, I get it, almost like, I'm going to let you off the hook. It's not a great look, but there could be a part of him just like, well, if I really think about it, maybe she loves me, but I don't know. There's a lot of science she doesn't. So I'm just going to end this right now, and I'll let her off the hook so that she doesn't have to break up with me, or I don't want to have to deal with being broken up with. So I'll just let her off the hook. And then if she really does love me, then I guess she'll really make sure to show me. Another version of this is that he does intend on being with her. And this is his way of communicating that he doesn't like something, which people will do. People will do this even when they want the relationship to be, you know, think of Angela, these kinds of people who will, uh, as a way of trying to communicate that they don't like something that they're hurt or something they will absolutely punish the other person emotionally so I, I you know i don't know what's happening hey for real take this mic off me man take this shit off me i'm out bro i don't want him to leave i'm scared that he's trying to like tap out and i don't want to lose him so i don't care what i have to do like who cares that's people pleasing like i don't give a fuck like i don't want to lose him so whatever all right so she's saying i'll do whatever um, I, I don't care if it's people pleasing. So I think she's acknowledging like he's being a jerk, but I want to get him back. So I'm going to try. I realize that maybe I'm being kind of a pushover and a doormat in this instance, but I don't care. I, I want to be with him. So yeah. either way, I hope that she knows that she didn't do anything terrible. I mean, again, it's normal that he was triggered. It's normal that he, it hurt him. That's okay. She didn't mean it. Sorry, guys. Can you give me a second? Should I not be upset at that? If, if, if your wife came up to you and said that some guy told her that she was cute and then she in turn said that you're cute as well in the... Yeah, Matt, you, anyone can be upset with that. You can be upset with that. How do you exhibit that upsetness? How do you communicate the upset? That's the key. If you were to buy me a drink, whatever happens, happens, would you be upset? Man to man, would you be upset? Me personally? You personally. Yeah, you fucking would be. And if I would have done the same thing to one of the girls, I'd be the fucking player that's playing her like a fucking fiddle. Yeah, it, this show's interesting because they let things breathe more than on 90 Day Fiance. There's editing for sure, but a lot less. I mean, 90 Day Fiance, sometimes... It'll be one sentence, and you can tell that it's literally seven different sentences that have been edited together. And maybe it's a true statement, but this show doesn't do that as much. They just they just show the scene. And then now Matt is talking to the producer, and you know that probably happens on 90 Day Fiance. It's totally natural for Matt to because he's alone, and he's having a total meltdown, and there's people around. And I hear that the cast members will often bond with the producers and the camera guys and the sound people. And so it's natural for them to, to, to just be like, am I wrong here? What's going on? You, you, you saw the whole thing. And so he's asking the producer and the producer's like, me personally? And it sounds like maybe he non-verbally said, well, yeah, it probably would bother me. And he says, yeah, exactly. And it's like, okay. but And it's just interesting to see because it adds to that layer of realism to a reality TV show that she's crying. He's saying, get the mic off of, off me. He Somehow they convinced him not to do that. And she's like, please go away, right? It, it lends itself to the credibility of the emotional experience, which I like. I, I, I'm a, I don't like that they're suffering, <laughs> but... If we're watching this as reality, as a as an edited, but as reality, then the more credible it is, the more enjoyable it is. It sucks for these people. And I'm not gonna get played, bud, okay? It's not a game. This is my life. This is my life. If I'm gonna commit to somebody, I gotta know that she's with me 100%. Are you still committed to play? Maybe. I don't know. I'm playing. Yeah. Again, his reaction, his emotions, everything's fine. It's just the way he communicates about it. If I were there, I would have helped both of them. That's another part of this. Is, as a couples therapist, I've dealt with this a lot. Things, yeah, 
that was totally fixable if Colleen does love him. That is a question, I think. If Colleen does truly love him, which I'll take her word for it, say that she does, then this is totally fixable. <laughs> uh, when your toilet breaks, you call a plumber. When you got a cavity, you go to a dentist. When you have this situation, you go to a couple of therapists. Now, this show is not designed to do that, right? You know, they did have that in Married at First Sight, but oh, the couple therapy on that show was cringe, um, <laughs> if you can even call it that. Uh, I'm not going to, not all the time, but, you know, you can watch my episodes on that. And, uh, and sometimes on 90 Fiance, the couple therapy is pretty cringe as well. What was that one guy that had a thing behind him that said man up or something? Like, what therapist has a thing in their office that is touting toxic masculinity? <laughs> Just like, I don't know. We don't know what the, that thing meant. But anyway, so, but I, ugh, it's just like, it's, it's fixable. If they just had some, you know, because all I would have to do is be like, okay, dude, Matt, like, I hear you. I, you're right. I, of course. You're hurt, right? Is that what's happening? Are you hurt? He said, like, well, I don't know. I'm, I just, I'm pissed because, you know, wouldn't that upset you? And I'd be like, go into your body right now, Matt. Go with me. Okay. Work with me here. What's the fear? What's the pain? You know? And then he's like, well, I, I guess I'm afraid that she doesn't love me. Okay, great. That, that, that's rational. It makes sense. What's the pain? Well, I guess it hurts that she seems to like not really care about my feelings, that she's like she might actually want to be with someone else or she doesn't care how I feel about things, doesn't care about my history or something. Okay, that's fine. You're hurt, rational, normal. A lot of people would be that way. Even if you're the only person on the planet, that's okay. You were hurt and you were afraid. Why are you so hostile? <laughs> That's not exhibiting your emotion. That's not a, she's just, she just feels attacked. She doesn't know that you're hurt. She doesn't know you're afraid. If you tell her that, trust her. She will rise tr now. And then I go to her and I would make sure that she rose to the occasion because I wouldn't know if she would or not because she has issues, I think, related to chaos and being made to be wrong and being barked at. And even if he did come at her in a, healthy way she still might interpret it as if she's being attacked or something so i would which would hinder one's empathy ability to access it so i'd hopefully she'd be able to be that way but it all hinges on if she actually does love him in the way that you would in a situation like this so if she did bring that out of her you know help her to exhibit that honestly and then back and forth a little bit apologize for the way he's been treating her mainly she could apologize for the pool moments and say i'm sorry yeah i i didn't mean to hurt you i could see why you're hurt I, i'm the future i'll try not to do that again i think the factors were that i'm not used to dealing with situations like that i don't know what to do uh, uh you know whatever and you know it's fixable it's fixable but we could be watching something that is fixable completely ruining an otherwise good relationship I don't know. It was definitely an emotional night. It was just, we weren't able to communicate. And um, this morning we were able to communicate through what had happened and um, have a lot better understanding for it and realize that it wasn't, I guess, as big of an issue as, big of an issue as um, we were making it out to be. Okay, so they were able to make up and have a more differentiated conversation. I'm guessing he was more differentiated, which was the key, right? And he's saying it we were making it out to be a bigger situation, which I'm thinking that's more him because she wasn't really making anything out of the situation. He he was the one. So maybe he's saying, I was blowing it out of proportion. Okay. I wish we could have seen that. It's fine we didn't because we, we don't have to be invasive on every aspect of their life. But I could imagine that she was able to be reassuring. He was able to be less hostile. That'll happen sometimes, right? You get triggered, you get hostile, and then later on you have a greater ability to differentiate. So, you know, I don't know. I suspect, though, that it wasn't as strong as is necessary to really put it to rest, given the way that they communicate, but maybe it was. I don't know. I wasn't clear with what was said. Um, so yeah, we talked about it this morning. We're back on track. We're back to being 
our lovey-dovey selves. Uh, it's good to kind of have that that little stir up to see how we kind of respond to it. Well, obviously, we got a lot of work to do, but um, I think we're back on the right track. Now, the key is that for Matt to learn how to manage his emotions better, to have other options when he is hurt, because if he doesn't work on that, because even if he does work on it, you know, say he were to enter therapy on that issue with a very competent therapist and work two or three hours a week on that, it would take him months to really break that cycle. I'm guessing he observed that growing up and it's modeled for him in various different ways. He probably doesn't know other ways of communicating. A lot of people aren't really taught those things. They're certainly not necessarily modeled them. So when I hear those kinds of things from people, they'll be like, yeah, we worked on it. Everything's good. And I'm thinking, have you changed your personalities? Because if you haven't done that, then it'll happen again. <laughs> just because just you made up doesn't mean that your personalities have changed. All right. Well, that is it for that episode. Everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.